Alrighty, so hi, I'm Beck Lane, and this is Catalyst and Company. Catalyst and Company, where we're catalysts in each other's lives as well as we're on our own, and hopefully we become the artists we've always wanted to be. Um, I'm going to talk about the painting behind me in just a sec, uh, but first, today is a really hard day. Today is a really hard day. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, uh, revoked Roe versus Wade, um, which uh, anti-abortion people and extreme right wingers are super excited about. This is something they've been working for for decades, as if you're, you've heard a million times, um, especially Mitch McConnell. He has made it um, his life mission to revoke Roe versus Wade. But what people, what uh, a lot of people don't seem to understand is not only does this affect uh, women and women's rights, which apparently is no big deal, um, it affects everyone. It affects absolutely everyone because the not only the uh, will women be forced to breed, um, and that's what it is, is forced breeding um, under any circumstance, uh, but the, in the end result, the end result is these children, these unwanted uh, children who are born will affect the economy, will affect culture, uh, society um, as they grow. Um, it's just, it, the implications are beyond measure. Uh, but besides, you know, ruining women's lives and especially poor women's lives, um, not taking away their right to a, a freedom, an American freedom, or something that was considered a, a freedom and a possibility and an option. Um, uh, the Supreme Court has opened the door to revoke and rescind any right, any, con any constitutional right that has been afforded to us, to American citizens. And that's what a lot of, um, you know, religious right-wingers aren't thinking about. They don't care. They don't really care about the unborn baby, number one, um, be, uh, because we've heard this a million times now. Uh, once the child is born, it's, meh, who cares? Let the mother struggle to feed everybody. Let the mother struggle, struggle, struggle. They don't care about the mother. They don't care about the child once it's born. Um, there are a million things they could do to say, you know what, we will, we will um, take care of and keep our children uh, safe and fed and, and, and financially sound uh, once they're born. But they don't, they don't care. They really don't care. They really don't care. This country would be a lot different. Um, they would put in place safety nets and instead they're taking them away. That aside, again, any right now, SCOTUS is now the Supreme Court has proven that absolutely any of us can lose any of our rights at any point in time under this extremist right-wing um, culture that we're living in. What was it, 65 or 66 percent of the uh, population was against uh, rescinding Roe versus Wade, Democrat and Republican against it and they did it anyway because they can because they hold the power because of 45 because of trump it's just every day we wake up every day is more suffocating every day is more suffocating to the general populace i, I can't even there's so many things that that have been destroyed or are in deep and dire jeopardy in one fell swoop just because they can. It is absolutely immeasurable at this point. Women have never been anything more than property. We can't earn as much as men. We are not, we don't have the rights that men do and now they're taking away even more of those rights. So that's where we are.
that's what happened today and I'm very sad. I'm very sad and I'm uh, frightened um, because I did grow up in the 60s and 70s when things were a lot different, uh, so different for women, so different for so many people. And it felt before 45, it felt like we were getting somewhere. We were finally coming. We were finally able to clear a path to a future that's filled with more equality. And it shouldn't even, that shouldn't even be paired together, more equality. It should be, we, we, we were clearing a path to equality for everyone, for absolutely everyone. Now we know we're not the only people that are considered of value, literally cons the only, literally the only people that are considered of any value and are kept safe now are rich white men, rich, powerful white men. And that's it. That's absolutely it. And it's not hyperbolic. If they can rescind Roe versus Wade, how many laws and statutes and amendments can they rescind? And they're not held accountable at all, on any level, at all, yeah, on any level. It's a sad day, but um, let's move on, shall we? Um, behind me is a painting I started yesterday, and I'm not sure what their names are yet. Whoops, because this is another image. Here we go. Maybe you can see a little bit clearer. This is another image I pulled off the web. The women's names are not notated. Um, I haven't been able to find a, an original source for this, but I'm really excited about it. Last Yesterday, I worked on it for probably nine hours, which sounds ridiculous considering where we are. We are nowhere. Um, but what I had to do when I, I initially lined up the figures, excuse me, excuse me, I originally lined up the figures in aerosol or sketched them in using aerosol and then started going in with oils. Um, I realized over time as it got later and later about midnight or one this morning, um, this figure was pushed way over here. They were too far apart. They still are according to the reference material but I've been inching her over, like incrementally, um, all morning. Well, about two o'clock this morning, I started like going, you can't fudge this, you've got to start moving her. So I've been moving her for, uh, over this way a bit. Um, I haven't touched this figure to pull her closer into her friend, but I did lift her head. She completely had to be refigured and I was so, or recalculated, and I was so afraid to do it yesterday because sometimes when I'm having to redevelop a figure, the, everything can go wrong and I, um, everything can go wrong and I've applied too much paint and it just gets really frustrating and I have to um, sometimes ditch the canvases. But because I'm working with mineral spirits and oils, instead of using my Neon McGill, I am allowed the chance to wipe down and erase and move and, and restructure the entire the entire figure, or both the figures, because they've kind of had to be burp, 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 scooched in just a tad. So I'm really thrilled about this to have it started and to finally have it somewhere. In the original photograph, in the reference material, uh, their heads would actually be down here and there would be more information above. Uh, they're standing in front of a wall and a, a storefront. So you'd be seeing, having, you would have more items up above. I just, I don't care. Um, I, if you look at my paintings, I'm really not interested in doing an exact copy of the photo. I don't, I don't care. I'm, I, I don't care. I want to pull it into the things that matter. And to me, it's, it's the feeling that these, the feelings that these two evoke. In, in their faces, you can see the love and how much they cherish each other. They care for each other. They have their arms around each other. Um, they've pulled each other in close and they're celebrating their friendship or their relationship, whatever it is. And, and that's what I wanna show. I really wanna show their joy and their care for one another. I still have to get the figure right 
but uh, it, it wasn't important to me that I show whatever doodads and whatever wall up above. It doesn't matter to me. Again, I'm not doing the exact, exact, exact replica of the photo. That's, ugh, like, ugh. It starts to feel amateurish when, when I do that. But also in the photo, they don't have their feet. You can only see like the top of the tongue of either of their shoes. So I may have eliminated the shoe altogether, although I do enjoy painting shoes. Um, not painting them all the way in. If you look at my work, I'm doing it outlines. A lot of it is outlines and it's just highlighting and shadowing. There's not like, this is a brown shoe. This is a blue shoe. This is a tan shoe. I'm not filling it in. A lot like their faces, it's all conjecture. Um, like the folds in their dresses, it's all um, leaving it up to the viewer sort of to interpret. I've given the, the mind of the viewer enough information to disseminate what, is, what I'm trying to express, but I'm not giving them all the information. Again, that's another point I find so boring in, in, in illustrations and paintings and things. Here is everything served to you easily on a plate. I want it to be an interactive experience, an interactive experience with the viewer, where the viewer feels that they are part of the painting. They are part of the creation of the artwork. And that's something I don't talk about very often except when I've been explaining videos where, in videos where I have paintings that are set three inches apart or can allow uh, the, the, buyer or the, uh, the buyer or whoever to hang canvases apart from one another like these. I want the viewer, the buyer, the collector, whoever, to be able to experience the painting more than just hanging it on the wall and going, that's nice. I want more for them. I want them to really feel the paint, feel the artwork. And again, that's why I don't varnish. I don't varnish so that the viewer, the buyer, whoever can actually experience what the painter experiences. They can see the many, many lines in there. It's not about the perfection, you know, doing a perfect replica of the, of the photo. It is about allowing everyone from the painter on to experience what the painter experienced, to experience paint, to experience the development of the artwork. So there we are. That's today's little chit chat. Um, I'm gonna go back to being sad now. Um, if you'd like to help. <laughs> uh, and Brian, thank you so much. These are the other two canvases. I keep mentioning Brian, but he helped me to get these canvases. These are the other two canvases I was able to get the other day because of you, and I really appreciate it. Um, oh, Bill. Bill, who has the same last name as me, Lane, and that's total coincidence. Uh, the the uh, Neil McGilp and the Transparent Earth Red arrived today. Thank you so much for my Father's Day present. I really appreciate being thought of. I appreciate the gift. I don't get a lot of gifts or surprises ever in life. So that, that, that was just fantastic. Thank you so much. And again, let's not forget people like Eric who helped me, who helped me to get, um, oh, he sent me four bottles of Neil McGilp uh, a number of months ago, one of which I shared with another painter. Thank you, Eric, for allowing me to do that. Um, Dawn, who helped me to get paint recently, and everyone else, and I'm sorry, I should have everyone's names in my head ready to pluck, but to everyone who's helped me get paint or canvas, etc., cetera, uh, when I've really, really needed it. I so appreciate it so much. Um, you know, as an artist, we know, sorry, I'm kind of babbly. Uh, we know what it's like to, um, to go months without se selling a painting. And a uh, comment in my last, on my last video, someone commented, your paintings should be flying off the walls. Yeah, one would think, I'm sorry, I know I'm talented, and it just drives me nuts that I'm in this position of, hey, I have no more canvases, I run out of paint. If you would like to help, it drives me nuts. I mean, there's really, there's no explanation. 
people tend to put the, you know, they like to blame the artist for not being successful, but it does take a village. It takes, you know, teams of people and passion uh, to make an artist successful. Unfortunately, you know, I have not been blessed by those gods yet. I periodically, we do sell, but it's like not enough to keep me in a sustainable level which is, again, frustrating for you guys who believe in my artwork, and there are tons of people all over the world who, who love the artwork. It's really frustrating for me. It's really, and it's scary. I mean, it, rent is always due. My phone bill, is, my phone's about to be shut off. I mean, it's just like, how and why? I don't know. I had hoped, um, when I first started this video series, what I really, I may cry, when I first started doing these videos and it was Studio 120 and I was back in Rhode Island, my hope and expectation at that time was that things were going to take off, not because of the videos or because I post on Pinterest or Instagram or whatever, but I had a contract with an international art gallery firm out of New York. who had, like a million other people at this point, done a lot of this, and we're gonna do shows, and we're gonna um, promote you, and we're putting you in this book, and we're doing this, and we're doing that, and we had it all in contract. And they ended up doing nothing, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing but taking my artwork and walking away. Um, I forgot where I was going, other than you. Um, where was I? I know I was on the track to get to a point somewhere in there. Yeah, oh, so when I started this series, it was with the expectation that things would be going up, not side, not like laterally and then down, because this is what I wanted to do, was get to the next level and then turn around and go, here, take my hand and start helping people, talented artists who couldn't get a leg up. And every single time that I've managed to get even a tiny, tiny step above where I was the day before, it is always turn around and go here. Take my hand. Here's a bottle of Neil McGilp. Here's a, here's a, here's a sample of paints that I've gotten from gambling. It's sad and it's frustrating that I can't, you know, that um, I've had a lot, a lot of promises made and really huge opportunities that have been offered to me and talked up and, you know, uh, get ready, your life's about to change and then nothing fucking happens. I mean, then they just go, oh, well, yeah, I have a terrible attitude and that's mainly because I just keep getting punched in the head, honestly. But we're gonna stop that now and we're gonna um, focus on, try not to focus on what happened with the Supreme Court today and fo try and focus on painting and try not to focus on all the scary stuff that's looming over my head because, um, you know, I haven't sold anything in a bit, which is weird, but I hear you. When you say to me, why isn't your stuff flying off the walls? People have said to me hundreds of times, you should be, you should be famous, your artwork should be well known, blah, 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 blah. It's not for me lack of trying. Anywho, um, I'm going to get to work because I'm getting real sad and I don't want to. I just don't want to. And thank you to everybody who does support me, who does support the artwork, who does see the value in it, and who does care. And thank you to everybody who's able to... Um, you know, help out any way they can. All right, and do. Can help out and do. All right, I'm gonna shut up now, guys. All right, ready, Carrie? Ciao. Near, near, near. Boing.